In this video, we're now going to look at uh, lens aberrations. We're no longer going to consider the microscope perfect, and we're going to look at what makes it not perfect. Um, so from resolution and depth of field, we you know went with the idea that all the components of a microscope are perfect. Uh, but that's not the case, as you can imagine. And now we're going to look at what we call image distortions, uh, and these are called lens aberrations. So we're going to start by talking about chromic uh, aberrations. Uh, we'll also talk about spherical aberrations, and these affect the entire field of the image. Uh, there are a couple other uh, distortions that we're going to talk about, astigmatism and curvature of field, uh, and these only affect what we would call off-axis points of the image, so not ones that are on the, um, the uh, image plane. All right, so these aberrations will reduce the actual or true resolution and depth of field of an image. So they have consequences on our imaging. Um, so also just a, a heads up for um, other types of microscopy that you may do. Um, some of these uh, aberrations apply to other types of microscopy, such as electron microscopy that we'll look at later in the semester. All right, so let's start with chromic aberration. Uh, so this is caused by variation in the refractive index. So if we kind of think of the lens as a prism, uh, as you can kind of see here, this kind of illustrates the fact that um, because of this refractive index, we get that classic sort of scattering of white light into the visible spectrum uh, Roy G. Biv, just the different colors we can kind of see in the spectrum. So this is uh, known as light uh, dispersion, and, and this is the fundamental concept behind chromic aberration. So basically the idea is the refractive index is greater for short wavelengths, such as uh, blue down here, and then the refractive index is lower for higher index, such as red uh, on the, the wavelength. So what happens with these uh, is that different colors, different wavelengths, will be focused on different focal points uh, depending on those colors. So essentially that's why we call it chromic because it's dealing with color and how they're focusing on different focal points. And so this causes issues. So if we go to the next slide here, we see an illustration of this. So we have kind of the two, ex uh, two extremes, blue versus red in terms of those. So shorter uh, wavelengths, such as the blue again, uh, tend to be bent more inward, and therefore they are focused at a point closer to the lens. And then red um, is the opposite, and so it's uh, longer from the lens, and therefore the issue, as you can see, is that we have two focal points because we have multiple colors. So this is an example of two different wavelengths, but you can imagine if we have white light, then there's going to be a spectrum of different focal points in this case. So this causes an issue for us when we're looking, when we're thinking about focusing um, this image, as you might imagine. All right, so let's look at spherical aberration next. All right, so I have another drawing, uh, and you can imagine uh, in this drawing, you know, same thing, we have an optical axis, the, the lens is illustrated here, and then we're looking at light coming into the lens and focusing up uh, behind it as we've noticed before. And so what's happening here is that we're looking at two different extremes of light going through the lens. Light that enters near the optical axis, so this dashed line is the optical axis, and then we're looking at light that enters through the lens further from the optical axis. And so what's happening with those two cases is that the light passing very close to the optical axis uh, focuses further along the uh, optical axis, and so the focal points further along. Whereas 
uh, further from the optical axis, the focal point is closer. And so we call this um, spherical aberration because this phenomenon is called by uh, caused by imperfections in the lens, particularly uh, a more spherical curvature in the lens, so a non-ideal curvature. So this is caused by sort of an imperfect design or uh, imperfections in, in the, uh, the actual manufacture of this lens. So that spherical nature causes these two to occur. If we had a perfect lens, the simple lens we talked about, then these should focus um, at the same point. All right, so those uh, we kind of grouped together, the spherical and the chromic aberration. Next, we're going to talk about astigmatism. So here's a, a drawing that we'll get to in a second, um, but the over, overall issue with astigmatism is that we have light rays passing through the lens, and here we're considering not just the sort of side view, but the whole view, because light that passes through the vertical diameters of the lens and the horizontal are, in this case, not focusing um, on the same image plane. So just like we had differences in color and differences of shape, here the issue is the vertical and horizontal nature um, is causing different focal points. So how this can manifest itself is by uh, an elliptical streak in the image. So instead of a point, so you know if we consider an area disk, so this is what a single diffraction uh, diffraction from a single point source should look like, right? So this would be uh, a perfect image. Instead, we get these elliptical streaks, as you can see in these cases. So um, these are uh, issues where we now have differences um, in the focal plane based on whether it's the vertical, oh, sorry, vertical or horizontal images. So some causes for this, so what can cause this? Um, this can be from asymmetry in the lens. So again, sort of a manufacturer design issue with the lens, or it could also be how it's been mounted in the barrel. So if you're familiar with lens, uh, the objective lenses in your microscope, you'll know that the lens is actually mounted into a metal barrel. And so if there's incorrect mounting there, then this could also cause astigmatism. All right, the last one I want to talk about of these sort of lens distortions is curvature of field. So this is uh, what we call another of the off-axis aberrations. And the main result of this is that the focal plane uh, for the image, uh, you know, obviously we'd expect that to be flat. But in this case, it's not flat. There's a curvature to it. So we kind of expect it to be this dashed line. But in actuality, our image is focused on a curved plane, so hence the name curvature of field. So this is another off-axis aberration uh, when it's not flat. And so we have this concave spherical surface that we've seen here. So this uh, is particularly problematic when we're dealing with the higher magnifications and short focal length. So when the, 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 that term F, if you remember from the, uh, the lens to where the light is focused, uh, is short and the magnification uh, is high. All right, so some of the ways that we can deal with these aberrations because you know we have them and obviously if we want to maintain a high resolution and depth of field then we would want to either compensate for or reduce these aberrations all right so how we do this is first of all one of the techniques is that we can combine lenses that have different shapes and refractive index and these tend to eliminate the chrome uh, the chromic and the spherical aberrations. So if we combined lenses that have different shapes and refractive indexes. So again, 
if you remember me mentioning about compound light microscopes, the objective lens is often a series of lenses, not one simple lens, right? And so that will allow us to correct for chromic and spherical aberration. Uh, next, um, if we are again looking at chromic, um, you notice that we have blue and red light. So a simple solution here is that if we can just use a single wavelength, so a single uh, type of light, so blue or red or green, one color but not all of them, right? So that can obviously eliminate this chromic aberration. That's a simple way to do it. So we can use filters uh, in the illumination system that remove uh, other wavelengths that we're not interested in. Uh, and the last thing I just want to kind of point out about these corrections is that uh, these are common aberrations that happen with uh, all types of lenses and to correct for them is possible uh, and we can get rid of a lot of these aberrations and distortions, but there's obviously a trade-off and that trade-off is always the cost. So the more money you can spend on a lens, the more of these corrections that we can implement. And so that's a big factor in choosing your lenses is how much money do you have? How much can you get rid of these aberrations? And so we are going to talk about in some of the next sections, um, various uh, objective lenses, and we'll come back to these aberrations and what they correct for in those lenses.